emotions. And certainly that's what the field of psychology and the field of psychiatry has been has shown us over this these last decades is it's told showed us about defense mechanisms that there are so many ego defense mechanisms and the ego is protecting itself from being exposed to the light. It seems like it's against people, you know, we can say, well, stop projecting onto your husband or stop projecting onto your wife or your boyfriend or girlfriend um, or repression and denial. We can describe these mechanisms, but uh, it's really just the ego with its tricks trying to protect itself from healing release. It's just this one little puff of nothingness. And I say puff of nothingness because it wasn't created. God didn't create it, so it's, it truly is a puff of nothingness. It's been called a tiny mad idea. Uh, it's been called a, an idea that the Son of God remembered not to laugh at. So, you might say there's only one serious idea to do with this whole world, and it's the ego. And we give it a name just because we want to be practical in exposing it and releasing it. Not that it has any kind of reality. There, psychology talks about ego dynamics when you study psychology, and Jesus puts the word dynamics in quotations. Because how can something that doesn't even exist have dynamics? <laughs> oh yeah, I've got a real dynamic puff of nothingness going on here. <laughs> we never hear dynamic nothingness. <laughs> how was she? How was he? Um, she was dynamic nothingness. <laughs> no, it's just the two words don't go together at all. But we want to expose everything in a very authentic way and not hide anything. And it reminds me of the number one question that I get asked around the world as I go to these different countries. It always comes down to the number one question. How did this happen in the first place? <laughs> if everything is perfect love and oneness, then how did we get duality? How did we get multiplicity? How did we get conflict and war out of love? It just doesn't seem like that would follow. And one of the ways I like to address it is imagine yourself as being one of the first two Course in Miracles students on the planet and you're literally scribing and, and taking down the book and you're going chapter after chapter after chapter and at one point these first two human beings to, to touch this uh, divine scripture, they basically they said to Jesus, pardon, pardon, can we just ask, I don't know how many chapters in they were, just one tiny little question, please. How did this happen in the first place? And Jesus' answer was, well, you can tell by how you feel, and you can tell by the roller coaster of emotions that you experience, a part of the human condition, that you believe that it did happen. Mm. Interesting. You can tell by how you feel that you believe that it did happen. He was just speaking in general to all human beings, saying, well, I can tell you it's not real, but <laughs> you believe it. Almost like we have things called self-fulfilling prophecies and Pygmalion and a lot of examples throughout history of how powerful consciousness is, the mind is, and you're drawing forth witnesses to something that you believe when actually you don't really have all the evidence to make a conclusion that fear is real. Jesus is saying, if you will come with me and examine the evidence very carefully <laughs> and and come with me and, and follow my lines of reasoning, then you will have an experience that only love is real. And that's another thing about artificial distinctions. A lot of time in spirituality, rationality gets a bad name. Oftentimes the rational mind is associated with the ego. Not so. Not so. Actually, anybody who knows about philosophy 
knows that in a philosophical phrase of if A and B then C and so forth, you find that there is a line of logic but that everything depends on your first premise. Every logical outcome depends on the first premise. And the Holy Spirit has a very different first premise than the ego. The ego's is basically all is fear and the Holy Spirit's first premise is all is love. So actually rationality is not really working against your awakening, it's actually working for your awakening if you are careful enough and, and willing enough to follow, to trust where this is going. He will say there's a first premise, and we were talking about that yesterday, that divine innocence, original innocence, is the premise of the Holy Spirit, and original sin is the premise of the ego, and they will take you into very different experiences depending on which one you focus your mind on. If you are determined to find original innocence, you must define, you must find it because it's there. <laughs> In fact, it's the only one that can be found. You could never actually find original sin because it's really nowhere to be found. It's like there's a veil and you go past this puff and then the ego says don't ever lift this final veil because God will strike you dead and the Holy Spirit says let's lift the veil together because there's only light and love behind the veil. So that's the journey that we take. And we were talking this morning, Nikita and I were talking about the subtleties of letting go of protecting the ego. Because sometimes human beings will do some pretty crazy things. Under the name of protecting feelings, under the guise of I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, sometimes human beings will seem to tell lies. And sometimes they're even called little white lies. Well, it's, I didn't want to hurt their feeling. I wasn't going to tell them the truth because the truth hurts. You see, if you follow that line of thinking, the truth hurts, then you would protect someone from the truth. Whereas we're saying it's important to not protect the ego and expose false thinking and go on an authentic spiritual journey where you come into a state of integrity where you can let the Spirit speak through you from a place of certainty, from a place of clarity and realize that you don't really have the power to upset anyone. That's just another ego belief that you have the power to upset other people. Wow. And that's a big one in the sense that as long as you believe that, you seem to be walking emotionally and psychologically on eggshells, afraid to say what you need to say. Say what you need to say. <laughs> you know, we have all those songs. You, you will let it come out. You will let it express and extend because it's coming from strength. It's coming from clarity. It's coming from certainty. And Jesus, again, is an example of that. He, he spoke from clarity, he spoke from gentleness, he spoke from meekness, and it seemed like the people around him took offense to some of his words. In fact, some would seem to be greatly offended. Until it grew to the point after three years that there was a mob that said, crucify him. <laughs> they were so offended they, want, they wanted him dead and out of there. And yet, all he was doing was extending love. So that's an important thing to remember on the spiritual journey, that it may seem as if people perceive and take offense at love. But it's just that the ego is offended. Love never offends. Love doesn't have the power or the capability to offend. It's just the ego 
is offended. And I think most everyone here in the room has experienced that when you've gone on your spiritual journey, there seems to be the naysayers. There seems to be the, the, those that show up and say, what are you doing? That's crazy. You're wasting your time. You're often foolish pursuits that will get you nowhere, and so on and so forth. And those are just the doubt thoughts of the ego coming up, floating up into awareness. It's not really them that are telling us these things, it's our mind still believing in two thought systems and as we're going through the purification process, we're letting some of those attack thoughts percolate up to the surface of consciousness and they seem to get acted out in the characters. And they seem to get acted out in the environment as well. But, but all is well if we just start to realize that we just have to let them come and let them go. They can't really hurt us. They can't really take away the peace. <laughs>